Wind and Truth is almost out, and at this point you definitely don't have time for a reread. So let's get you caught up. First, thank you to Doug, Matt, Data Gremlin, Craig, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Mithi Carone, Galantagus, the son of James, Lexar and Talab, and 42 for their support. As well as Dragon Woodshop, who's sponsoring this video. More from them later on. Prologue, Navani's POV of Gavilar's death. She's making the entire feast and treaty and everything happen, eventually finding Gavilar in her study, talking with Kalak and Nail, with a bunch of funky spheres on the table. He generally bees a jerk, and she burns a glyph ward that says death, gift, death. So far, of the glyph wards we've seen her burn, she's batting a thousand. She arrives at his body, and he's more than mostly dead. So what does she do? Go through his clothes and look for loose change. Once again, it's up to her to create order out of his chaos. Part 1. The epigraphs from this part are from a lecture by Navani on how fabrials work. We find out how they pull spren into gemstones, plus the effects of different metals on those spren. It's neat. I go more into specifics in my Cosmere Connections videos on Rhythm of War, which are linked right here. Chapter 1. It's been a year since the end of Oathbringer and the Battle of Thalen Field. Herdaz has been holding out against Odium's forces, but fell two months ago, so refugees are fleeing into northern Alethkar, including Kaladin's hometown of Hearthstone. Liren's inspecting the influx of people for signs of plague, meets a suicidal one-armed Norl, while also keeping an eye out for the Mink, the Herdazian general we first met in that Oathbringer interlude, where the gross Alethi commander has to wrestle a hog. Same commander that was over Tien in Amaram's army. Rashon provides a drunken distraction, and they get the mink out of line. But, uh-oh, Lezzy and the Pursuer is here looking for Kaladin! Round one. Fight! Kaladin figures out the three-body problem, and the Pursuer runs away. Back on the Shattered Plains, Shallan finally gets kidnapped by the Sons of Honor. Cal's not doing great emotionally, lack of sleep will do that to you, but convinces the Singer Guards of Hearthstone to retreat. The Mink has vanished, and Navani makes an entrance on the Fourth Bridge, the massive flying ship she designed, and with a contingent of Edge Dancers for Medivac and Windrunners for air support. Plus Dalinar just casually opening a perpendicularity for Stormlight, they have evacuate the entire town. The Mink appears, and Dalinar agrees to rescue Herdazian troops with the Fourth Bridge. But here comes a bunch of Heavenly Ones! Shallan wakes up with a sack on her head. She's splitting more and more during this book, with Radiant Veil and her swapping driving basically every other paragraph. The Windrunners and Heavenly Ones pair off and fight, Kaladin clashing against Leshwi. He spares one of the fused instead of killing him. Shallan bluffs her way into escaping with the Sons of Honor when Adolin inconveniently comes to her rescue. She finally meets with Ayala Sadius. Vale plans to kill her. Sigzil fights with Leshwi, who spares him in repayment for Kaladin's previous mercy. Moash arrives. Kaladin and Leshwi have a good bout, ending with stabbing each other. They both see a different fused start to attack civilians, and Leshwi lets Kaladin go. I love Leshwi so much. Such a great character. Ayali says the Ghost Bloods killed two other High Princes who were in the Sons of Honor. Tells Shallan to look for the rarest vintage in her room, and then mysteriously dies from Blackbane. <laughs> Adolin catches up, and Shallan worries about a spy among her ranks before she goes to search Ayali's room to find her notebook. Kaladin fights and successfully kills the Pursuer, even though they had a weird Stormlight suppression fabriel. He goes to rescue some folk in the manor, but meets Moash, who slits Rashon's throat, then surrenders. Suspicious. Moash basically says life is pain and everyone's gonna die anyway, so Kaladin might just as well off himself. Renarin comes and chases Moash away with a vision of who he could have been, like forcing a gold vision on someone else. On the way back to Urethiru, Navani finds a span reed in her cabin. The person on the other end tells her to stop making fabrials. Shallan shows Adolin Ayali's notebook, with notes on Skidarial, Nalathis, and Tal Dane. Dalinar relieves Kaladin of duty, wanting him to become a teacher instead of a commander. Venli is in Kolinar, getting ready for Leshwi's return. She's plotting escape with some other singers, and we see Adolin's favorite tailor again. Adolin gets Cal to come drinking. Rock announces that he's leaving for the peaks to face judgment. Whatever that means. Shallan learns that Sia Anat is sending more corrupted spren to Urethiru. She chills with her brothers until Mraz shows up with his chicken. He congratulates her on taking down the Sons of Honor and reveals the Ghostblood's goals on Roshar, transporting Stormlight off-world. She agrees to find Rastaris in Lasting Integrity. Venli goes with Leshwi to the meeting of the Nine. Let's just take a moment to admire this artwork by Katie Payne. Ooh. 
Lesian claims the suppression fabriel malfunctioned and he gets to go kill Kaladin now. Leshwi says she gets first dibs. Raboniel shows up and says, hey, we gotta take your Ethiru, and Leshwi voluntells Venli to join her. Ten days after Hearthstone, so two weeks Roshar time, Dalinar officially announces Kaladin's retirement, and Sigzil and Scar get promoted. Cal goes to fight the laundry and gets a lecture on types of invested entities from Vasher. Zell. Navani interviews Zeth about Gavilar's assassination and the weird void light sphere, and eventually tells some of her scientists to check it out. It's awkward with Teravangian now, since, you know, he tried to kill all the world leaders. Awkward with Dalinar, too, since he published a book about how he killed his wife. Everyone goes down to a meeting room, and Dalinar and Shallan make a holographic map for the mink. He points them away from retaking Alethkar, and suggests pushing into a mool instead. Yasna tells Dalinar about her plan to abolish slavery, and Ash comes with Tom to talk about reforging the Oath Pact. Kaladin finally welcomes the fourth bridge back to Urethiru, and takes his parents to see the neighbor neighborhood reserved for the residents of Hearthstone, including a fully stocked clinic. He tells them he's retired, and Liren could maybe be a bit less of a jerk. Navani's working with her scholars on reverse engineering the suppression fabriel and hooking some fun stuff up to pulleys. Coalition of Monarchs happens, and Dalinar presents the plan to push into Amul. Teravangian is for it, which is sketchy, but everyone else thinks it's okay. They don't have very many honor spren, though, so Sigzil, in his newly appointed position as company lord over the Windrunners, suggests sending an envoy to their capital to negotiate for aid. Shallan and Adolin volunteer to lead it. Dalinar asks Navani to stay and lead Urethiru, while he's on campaign. And that's the end of part one! Brandon also has annotations to all of these chapters, which are very interesting to read. Now, interludes! Our first Syl interlude! She's flitting around Urethiru having ADHD. She asks both the Stormfather and Dalinar to help her understand Kaladin's feelings. They both say no, but Syl drops some knowledge about how Bondsmith's Bondsmith. It seems like something happened with Syl to strengthen her bond with Cal from this point. We then get another unique interlude with Sia Anat. I love her chapter symbol. Between the physical and cognitive realms, she's living on the edge. Living on the edge! While keeping a select few secrets from Odium, she covertly sends a Radiant Spren to Urethiru. Teravangian sets up Yakovet's betrayal of the Coalition forces and disbands the diagram, tossing his copy on the fire. Part 2! Epigraphs in this part are a letter from Harmony to Hoyd, and we get a lot of information in them. He's been reaching out to other shards and drops a lot of names. Endowment, Invention, Whimsy, Mercy, Valor, Devotion and Dominion, Odium and Ambition, Ruin and Preservation, that's 11 out of 16 directly mentioned. He also brings up his searching for a sword who can both protect and kill. Awax. Then we get to the heart of the message. Yes, Odium is to be feared, but it would be a combination of a vessel's craftiness and the power's intent that we should fear most. <sighs> Chapter 20. Shallan, Radiant, and Vale decide on who to bring with them from the Unseen Court. She receives the communication cube from Mraze. Adolin settles on an outfit and goes to visit Kaladin in the clinic. Cal's still pretty strung out, especially with all the mysteriously ill light-eyed ladies coming for treatment. Adolin gives him the coin he got from Zahel after finishing training, a coin from Halandrin, presumably featuring Peacegiver the Blessed and or Warbreaker the Peaceful. In a perfect world, no one would have to train for battle. We don't live in a perfect world. Wonder where that coin ended up. Sil gives Adolin some last-minute advice on Honor Spren. The team slowly assembles on the Oathgate platform, including the Stump, Zoo the Stone Ward, and all of Adolin's swords. He and Dalinar have an awkward goodbye, Dalinar not recognizing Adolin's agency and independence, and Adolin unable to look past Dalinar's past. And off they go to Shadesmar. Getting to the barge at the bottom of the tower, Adolin shows Maya how to brush Gallant, and Shallan notices someone messed with the comm cube. Kaladin's working the clinic, braces future Windrunner hopeful Aiden's ankle, Syl starts her duties as Kaladin's scribe, and the niece of the one-armed suicidal guy from Hearthstone is looking for him. She's been hit by the Pure Lake Plague. Common cold! Teft has stepped down from active duty. What a great sergeant. And they both go off to look for Norrell. Shallan, after much provocation from Vale, is drawing on the barge. She tells Adolin the real reason why she wanted to be Yasna's ward. Crime. 
Cal and Teft get Norrell out of the Devotery of Mercy. Mental illness care sucks on Roshar. He invents group therapy. Shallan does a sneaky and gives specific misinformation to each of her agents to see who's reporting to Mraze. She is struggling managing her other aspects. Dalinar, Gavinor, and Yasna leave with the army to Azir. Navani sees the scale model of the tower and gets a call from her mysterious contact. Her scholars set up the fancy triangulation rig to see how far away the other end is, running to a different room once they see it's in the tower. Revealed as a spren, Navani accidentally kicks the span read off a cliff. Oopsie! Land ho! The Shadesmark contingent arrive in Nameless. Shallan hangs back to make a phone call. Adolin and Maya meet a recently dead-eyed cryptic. Hmm. While talking with Mraze, Shallan has a mini flashback to talking to a cube like this before. She nopes to the back of her mind, and Vale has to take over. He mentions corrupted glory spren, indicating Beryl as the spy. Adolin and company check out a human caravan from Tukar. They're unfriendly. But Notum, the former captain of the honor spren ship from the Oathbringer Shadesmar trip, is here. He's not terribly friendly either. Venli and Raboniel chat on the hike to Urethiru. Venli's interested in the Make Im, fused that can walk through stone with the surge of cohesion. Hey, that's the one Will Shapers have! Everyone in Shadesmar thinks Adolin's ideas suck. Radiant and Vale agree that Beryl isn't the spy. They all meet Notum again on his fancy Rishadium imagined steed before he has to turn away from the Honor Spren Fortress. Adolin and Shallan go for a walk, see Star Spren, and do some much needed emotional bonding. Cover. Felt lets Adolin know the Tukari caravan has split off. It's rescuing time! Adolin jumps on Gallant with Maya, telling the rest of the company to follow. Shallan leaves Pattern to watch the camp, and we get the first really gory fight in the series. Adolin lays in with a greatsword, chopping off bits left and right, but he takes a spear to the gut. Maya grabs a sword and guards his back doing the morning kata, which is awesome, and the freaky smart Gallant makes it seem like a significant force is all Almost there. Adolin doesn't win, but the Tukari definitely lose. Foreshadowing? They load Notum up to take to lasting integrity. Shallan realizes Pattern is the spy. He used the comm cube and then lied to her about her childhood. She's really starting to crack now. They arrive at the Honor Spren capital, and the Honor Spren are jerks. Adolin's only option is to basically put himself on trial for his ancestors' actions, and he, Maya, Pattern, and Shallan enter the fortress. Navani plays with the lift glove thing. Then goes to question Dabid, who was caught trying to replace the lost Spanreed. On the way, something goes boom. No more strange dark sphere from Gavilar. An Everstorm passes, and the Singer invasion of Urethiru begins. They make it to the Crystal Pillar room in the basement, and Raboniel starts to force Void Light into it. The security system gets reversed and activated, and the humans realize they're being invaded. Teft drops to the ground. Cal assumes he had a stroke and tries to lash him upward to carry him, it doesn't work. Navani starts to question Dabid, who indicates he's not working with the enemy. The sibling introduces themselves, but then things go south. All the edge dancers in the main clinic are unconscious, so Kaladin toes Teft up to his dad's, faintly hearing Syl. Relaine tells him of the invasion and that span reads aren't working. Cal starts to spiral into PTSD. <laughs> the pursuer gets permission from Raboniel to go kill Kaladin. Venli feels conflicted. The humans set up a pretty sweet ambush, stopping Stormform Regal's attacks with lightning rods. They start to force their way to the basement. Navani follows the siblings' instructions to a hidden room and start filling a big ol' sapphire with stormlight, thanks to the Thalen Artifabrians finally giving up their secret for doing it fast. The sibling warns of troops being brought in from the Oath Gates, operated by a human with an honor blade. The humans make a valiant effort toward retaking the Crystal Pillar Room, until the pursuer shows up. Navani manages to fill the sapphire with stormlight, which the sibling then uses to make a force field. Raboniel announces the Singer occupation of the tower, its residents allowed to continue their daily activities, but all unconscious radiance delivered to her. She hires Navani to work on Fabrials. Singers come to take Teft, and Kaladin resists, mortally wounding a regal in the process. Lirin is horrified and refuses to go into hiding. Kaladin takes Teft and runs. Second batch of interludes! First from Moash, who's trying to throw his shard blade like Adolin. Ken, one of Kaladin's original chicken scouts, tells him she's leaving Kolinar. He gets a vision from Odium, who confronts him on his preoccupation with Kaladin. I am mostly unchained. Odium plans to ride on Moash's connection to Kaladin to give him visions, find a way to make him jump. 
Lyft hiding in the air ducts, stealing food that's been left out for her. We get a bit about her interaction with Cultivation. She asked not to change, so her mother would continue to recognize her. So why is she still growing? The invasion begins, and she sees a chicken fight. She rescues the injured red one, eventually able to heal it after some resistance, then finds Gera's body missing his rings. Mraze, with his green chicken, starts to chase her. Teravangian's dumb, waiting to betray the Coalition, wondering what's so special about Renarin. Odium stops by, and Teravangian confirms that Renarin is a blind spot, and that Odium is afraid of Nightblood. If a god can fear, a god can fall. Teravangian issues Order 66 which in this case the Jedi were totally ready for, and is arrested minutes later. Now part three. Kaladin, guided by the sibling, makes it to a safe part of the tower and falls asleep. Flashback to Eshenai first finding the humans, both from hers and Venli's perspectives. And right as Venli was going to discover Warform too. Navani gets to work under Raboniel, first talking about the mechanics of the fourth bridge. Raboniel reveals that soul casters were originally spren that manifested themselves as such in the physical realm. Her goal is to end the war. The epigraphs in this part are from their shared notebook, The Rhythm of War. Kaladin has a nightmare of killing his friends, and Moash claiming that it's his own fault. He awakes, still exhausted. Dalinar and the Mink are observing the war in Amul, neutralizing Taravangian's forces. Kord, Rock's daughter, has also joined his guard. Where is Risen? They hear of the disruption in Urethiru, and then Nail appears, demanding that Dalinar submit. Dalinar does a bit of bondsmithing to him, and sees flashes of his history and the eight lines connecting him to the other members of the Oath Pact. One is broken, six are weak, one is Talm. Shouldn't there be one more? I know Yezrian's dead, but he's presumably the broken line. Unless his line is gone and someone else is broken? Dalinar considers the possibility of reforging the Oath Pact. Eshenai meets with the humans, learning more about them. Axendweth asks her about Spren that can speak, which she dismisses as fake, but a story. We see the confusion about Chasm Fiends being their gods, and then we see a Chasm Fiend, but it ignores them. Them. Do we see this same Chasm Fiend later? Eshenai ends up showing her fancy knife to Gavilar, and telling him of the listener stories of the Knight's Radiant. He seemed pretty jazzed about that. Navani's got her scholars doing busy work while she chats with the sibling. They tell her she needs to protect three other nodes in order to prevent the full overthrow of the tower. The sibling creates a conference call with Navani and Kaladin, who's collecting supplies. She asks him to scout out the Oath Gates and keep an eye out for nodes. That is indeed a surgeon's responsibility. They sit on your windpipe and they crush your dreams. Dalinar, Yasna and Wit talk about governance and treaties, including those with gods. Yasna wants to end the Alethi monarchy. Good for her. She starts advising generals on battle strategy, specifically debate Ruthar into doing something dumb, at which he is remarkably adept. Wit? Harsher. Ruthar challenges Wit, who names Yasna as his champion. Ruthar then refuses to fight, so Yasna stabs him in the throat, with Renarin at hand to immediately heal him, though forcing him to forfeit his lands and title to his son Rallus, whom we know is an accomplished duelist when he's got three other people with him. And that's the last trial by sword in Alethi history. Renarin tells Dalinar he had another episode, aka a vision. Venli secretly works to prepare a group of singers for escape, putting some of her people over care of the unconscious radiance. She feels doomed to fail, and then tells Tambor of her experience with Axendweth when the humans visited the second time, when she first got the gemstone containing a void spren. Venli hears about Kaladin's family's upcoming execution and tells Leshwi. She takes them under her protection. Dalinar plays with Gavinor, if you can call anything that boy does playing. He makes his way to Bridge Four's nightly stew ritual for the first time, greeted by cheers when he takes his first bite. Renarin tells him of his most recent vision, re-summoning it and describing it. Dalinar in stark white shard plate, pierced by a black arrow, facing away from Odium. He interprets it as an ultimate impossibility of tying Odium down with a contest of champions. Why agree to a fight that he could lose? Renarin asks Dalinar to consider adding more enlightened slash corrupted radiance, as there are other touched spren willing to bond. He doesn't say no. Syl remembers her old knight, Relador. His death caused her to sleep through the recreants. Dabit arrives with some broth, so Kaladin takes a trip on the outside of the tower to peek at the Oathgate, basically doing this. 
he's gonna steal one of their working span reeds. Venley puts Kaladin's family in charge of caring for the unconscious Radiance. The Windrunners seem closer to waking than anyone else. The tower interferes with the Fused usual way of detecting Radiant powers, so she might be able to practice. But oops, she just led them to another node. Eight years ago, Venley bonds the Void Spren, even after the Stormfather warning against it. She initially struggles to attune the rhythms. Eshenai's worried. Kaladin manages to steal a bundle of span reeds, but now he has to go save the sibling. Facing off against the pursuer again, locking him in a closet, he manages to destroy the sibling's node, and then gets stabbed in the chest by Raboniel. He's not healing as well as he used to. Venli hears a pure tone seeing Relaine, another of her people. There's a void spren watching him. She sees Mraze make a deal for Oathgate access with Raboniel, giving her lift in exchange, as well as that silver necklace we saw in Shadesmar in the last book. She gets Relaine released, and tries to swear her next ideal, but can't. No selectively seeking freedom here. Navani tries to get Kaladin a flying glove. She sees Singers using her son's shard blade against the tower's force field, and considers the efficacy of an emulsifier to mix Stormlight and Voidlight. Venli and Eshenai are both meeting with the Five. Venli about warform, Eshenai about establishing diplomatic relations with the humans, pushing for a unified listener people. Their mom is not doing well. I feel it. Hopefully Warform will help. Syl thinks Dalinar connected her to her past somehow, which is why she's now remembering Relador. She and Kaladin promise to help each other through sadness. Dabid brings the flying glove, and they go to practice. Yasna's on the battlefield, and war is hell. She gets fairly effectively overwhelmed, wanting to experience real battle, then ends up lighting a bunch of people on fire. They eventually win, but Wit found a sleepless disguised as a pen. Time to tell Yasna about the ghost bloods and Thydekar. Navani's experimenting with lights and prisms. Raboniel tells her of the theoretical anti-light, and she meets her crazy daughter. Dalinar's experimenting with connection. He talks with Teravangian, who believes he's going to lose. Teravangian tells him of cultivation and the diagram, and Dal Dalinar accuses him of simply wanting the power. Venli practices stone shaping, the stone speaking to her, showing her Dawnsinger history. Welcome home, child of the ancients. Tambor brings other light spren, ready to bond Venli's squires. It's a bit of an invasion right now, maybe later. Eshenai accompanies her mom into the storm, but ends up taking war form instead, hearing a pure tone of honor. A rival family attacks, and she says, nah, we win. Navani's still going with lights. The sibling lost their ability to create tower light with the capture of ba Mishram. Did that event somehow cement Odium's tone as native to Roshar? They sucked some lifelight out of Lyft, but she's still unable to get anything to mix. The sibling tells Navani of the node in the well, which immediately gets targeted. Kaladin struggles awake from another nightmare, and takes his spear from Dabit, who speaks for the first time on screen, life before death. He makes his way to the breakaway market, using the power glove to simulate lashings, tussling with the pursuer, and then engaging with Leshwi, who can tell something is up. Dashing away to destroy the node before Raboniel finishes corrupting it, he gets trapped in the well, separated from Syl. Following the pipes to an underground reservoir, he makes it back out, then, in an attempt to escape capture, leaps out of the tower and into a high storm. Dalinar rides with the Stormfather, finds out what's up at the tower from Kaladin, and pushes him to safety. Stormy doesn't like that. So Dalinar has to figure out another way to grow as a bondsmith. Maybe from Ishar? More interludes! Seth hears Teravangian has requested an Oathstone lookalike. He's got a crusade to go on, but first he has to stop that old man. Long story short, Cheery Cheery can talk! Teravangian's emotional. Renarin comes to try and convince him to work with them, then Zeth confronts him. He tells him Zeth's dad is dead and that he needs to give Nightblood to Dalinar. Assuming it to be further manipulations, Zeth refuses. Whew! Real quick, a word from our sponsor, Dragon Wood Shop. They're a small business making handcrafted wooden displays that are perfect for book lovers and collectors. If you're looking for something special to show off your favorite items, or if you need a gift idea, you've got to check them out. Everything is beautifully made and totally unique. And just for you viewers, Dragon Wood Shop is offering 5% off with the code SHAFO, plus free shipping on orders over $75 in the US. Head over to dragonwoodshop.com and find something cool. Part four. 
Epigraphs here are from Kalak's journal. He mentions Midius and believes Ba Automishram needs to be released for the good of all Spren. Chapter 73. Venli has been putting in work, as guided by her Void Spren. Her mom's memory is deteriorating. She plots to bring her people to Kolinar, intimidating them enough to accept forms of power. Venli, Relaine, and Kaladin's family are caring for the unconscious Radiance. Relaine's got maps, but Liren seems content to roll over. They see someone with a drawn Shosh glyph on their forehead. Liren scoffs at it, but Venli recognizes the value of hope. Shadesmar crew are in lasting integrity. Shallan's struggling with Pattern, who's trying to come clean about it all. They confirm that the unusual person known as Sixteen is not Rastaris, but Shallan, upon meeting the dead-eyed cryptic, has finally made a difficult decision. Navani and Raboniel succeed in mixing Stormlight and Voidlight by singing the tones and rhythms of Odium and Honor in harmony, the rhythm of war. Raboniel is seeking a way to kill a god. Chapter 77. This is Venli's POV of Gavilar's assassination. She and Ulim go to pick up more Void Spren from Axendweth, but only find a note saying she had to leave Roshar thanks to Gera, the other known Feru chemist on World. Venli tries to sneak away alone and immediately gets caught and locked up. Ulim returns to her, warning of heralds in the palace. Speaking of, here's Nail! It seems they know each other. Nail gets pissed that Gavilar has been working toward the desolations. He tells Venli of a certain slave in possession of an honor blade. War should get her people to accept forms of power. No way this could go wrong! Pattern admits to Shallan that he used the cell phone to call Wit, but that Wit must have been overheard on his end. That means nobody's a traitor, except for who killed Iolai. There's a commotion, and it turns out the High Judge is Kellek, who is Rastaris. The maps Relaine had mentioned a group of people seen on the far eastern side of the Shattered Plains. Dabid comes for help, because Kaladin won't wake up. He's stuck in a horrible nightmare, maybe transported to Braze? He stumbles into a protected bubble with Wit and Design inside. Wit tells the story of the dog and the dragon. It will get worse and then better, and then worse. But you will be warm again. Radiant's pissed at Mraze for not telling them who Rastaris really is. She retrieves the Racium dagger from the cube, and Mraze explains why they need Kellek's soul. Thydekar has a similar problem. Besides, with Rastaris out of the picture, Shallan could impersonate him and rule in Adolin's favor. Venli's practicing her powers and hears the tones of cultivation and odium in harmony. What would that be called? She tells Leshwi that the Pursuer has found Kaladin's parents, but they are protected by Raboniel. Dabid wants to bring Liren to help his son, but he won't promise to not turn Kaladin over to the Fused. Venli suggests freeing Lyft, which they accomplish. Still can't swear her next ideal, though. Navani's in full research mode, making traps for the hallway, using Racium to move Spren into other gemstones, discovering force multiplication and conservation of energy. Very cool stuff. Raboniel gets her some special sand to use in measuring the strength of Stormlight. Relaine and Dabid bring Lyft up to Kaladin, and we hear his history. Lyft heals Cal with some difficulty, and then Teft. Venli and Eshenai's mom was found injured and confused on the plains. The void light sphere Esh and I got from Gavilar faded after months. So why did the anti-void light one last until it exploded? Probably just gemstone quality? Venli's going to get more storm spren, as the Everstorm is nearly ready. Adolin's trial begins, with the first two witnesses firmly against humanity. They bring Notam in, who has been promised an end to his exile for his testimony. He instead says, Honor is not dead so long as he lives in the hearts of men. Shallan fakes an injury in order to steal a bunch of Stormlight. Venli shows Eshenai a captured Storm Spren, a form of power. She goes out into the storm, almost says the Will Shaper second ideal, and is greeted by a Chasm Fiend, who seems to give her a Light Spren, our first sighting of Tambor. Navani's hard at work, using white sand and cymatics in her research. Raboniel gives her the title Voice of Lights. Navani realizes the particle wave duality of Stormlight. If there is a wave, there can be an inverse. Adolin's trial day two. It doesn't go well, especially when he admits to meeting the recently dead-eyed cryptic. Shallan, with Formless, resolves to capture and impersonate Kalak. Teft's awake, and he's sober. He gets re-healed by Lyft so he doesn't go unconscious, tells of his experience with the Invisagers, which eventually enabled him to help save Kaladin. Fenderana was right, Teft was worth saving. Venli's working with Raboniel, who commends her for her loyalty to Leshwi. She gives her a writ of authority and a map, which mentions a group of Parshendi still alive on the plains. Trial Day 3. Formless is up and at him. When they get to Kalak's house, Radiant confesses to killing Iolai. Vale steps out of 
of herself, acknowledges that Formless is simply Shallan, and Shallan admits to killing her parents. She then incorporates Vale with her memories of Testament as a child. Then she tells Kellek of the Ghost Bloods, but he gets sequestered by the Honor Spren anyway. Again, Honor Spren are jerks. Adolin arrives at the Forum, where the last witness is Maya. The new judge uses her to condemn Adolin and all of humanity for the Recreants, until, pulling strength from Adolin, she finally shouts, WE CHOSE! Relaine finds Venli, and she tells him of the remnant of their people, as well as her part in the rest of their demise. When she refuses to help in rescuing the Radiance, he leaves. She plans to use that rescue as a cover to escape. You thought Navani was in the zone before, but now she's taking hyperfixation to a whole new level, eventually finding a tone that expels void light from a sphere. Raboniel teams up, and using the right tone in a vacuum, they create anti-void light. Navani correctly anticipates Raboniel will try to combine the lights, but she doesn't die in the explosion. Instead, she uses the anti-light to kill her daughter, preventing future returns. Raboniel then gets to work on creating anti-storm light, which would kill Radiant Spren. Final batch of interludes. Hasina helps Liren truly understand why people take hope from Kaladin. Noral is painting shosh glyphs on people. He still gets up. He still fights. So I figure... I can too. Aiden, the aspiring Windrunner, goes with his father to the atrium to see the disturbance. Teravangian is still musing on how to defeat Odium. He'll have to get Zeth inside a vision. Sia'anat appears and promises two corrupted Spren, which will draw Odium's attention. And part five. Epigraphs here are the musings of El. We'll meet him later. Chapter 98. Dalinar's forces are winning in Emul. He promises the mink to free Herdaz. Sigzil brings Stargile to do a painting for Dalinar, showing Ishar waiting to meet. Yasna and Wit plot to figure out a way to prevent Odium from winning, even if he doesn't lose. Wit is someone who is not bound. The final node has been found, so Kaladin and Teft suit up. Dabit and Relaine go down to Navani, Teft is going to bring Lyft to wake the Radiance, and Kaladin will take care of the Pursuer. Dalinar, Yasna, and Yonagon talk about retaking the tower. It's impossible. Dalinar might be able to bring a force through Shadesmar and open a perpendicularity to bring them through, though the Stormfather doubts he's far enough along in his oaths to manage it. Better go level up with Ishar! He gives Yasna a copy of Oathbringer, asking her to write the undertext. Vyre's not working the Oathgate right now, so Venli's group can't get to the plains. She resolves to smuggle out Kaladin and his family. Moash arrives, ready to kill Navani, but Rabonia points him to Kaladin, giving him a sack of sand and an anti-light dagger. The one she used to kill her daughter still has a bit of a charge. Kaladin begins his contest with the Pursuer. Teft and Lyft make it to the infirmary, but Moash is there, and he swipes through Lyft's legs. He tosses out some sand and faces off with his honor blade against Teft, who has drawn a knife. Kaladin is taunting the Pursuer, and makes him summon a fourth body. Moash starts to kill the unconscious Radiance, so Teft challenges him one-on-one. -on -one. He's wounded, but prevents a killing blow by partially summoning Fenderana as a spear. So close to the next ideal. Instead of grappling him, Moash is able to see where the Spren is due to the sand on the ground, and stabs her directly with the anti-light dagger. Teft declares that he dies knowing he is loved, and Moash stabs him with the honor blade. Kaladin forces the pursuer to run, but then Moash drops Teft's body in front of him. He breaks, and Moash destroys the final node, giving Lirin to Lesion, and tells Kaladin there are only two options left, give in to Odium, or give in to despair. The force field around the crystal pillar falls, and Raboniel tells Navani to take her notebook and flee. Instead, she suggests they wait to see if Kaladin defeats Moash, and Raboniel walks into a pain reel trap. Navani grabs the anti-void light dagger and stabs Raboniel, though there wasn't enough to kill her. Moash arrives. Lesion gives Lirin to Leshwi, Lordy, who immediately releases him. Lesion then attacks Kaladin, who defends himself with terrifying ferocity, eventually lashing Lesion's head from his body. The fused holding his father flees, freak, and Kaladin gives chase to the top of the tower, where the panicked fuse pushes Liren off. Kaladin jumps. Moash pursues Navani down the hallway. Raboniel attacks him with the Racium Dagger, draining his Stormlight. Navani tries to speak with the sibling, and hears the rhythm of war instead. The Stormfather appears to Dalinar on his way to Tukar. The son of Tanavast has entered the storm for the last time. Syl holds Kaladin's hand as they fall. She has forgotten the words. 
and he's not strong enough. Dalinar convinces the Stormfather to bring Cal into a storm vision. Humans rush to defend the Radiance against the Pursuer's troops. Venli reveals herself to Leshwi as a Radiant. Kaladin struggles to say the words, but can't. Dalinar connects him to warmth. A vision of Amaram's army, Tien's last day. He goes with the other messenger boys to help them feel brave, and now he's here to help Kaladin feel brave. Ugh, so many tears. Tien gives him a wooden horse, which evaporates as the vision ends. With the urging of Tien and Teft, Kaladin says his fourth ideal which Dalinar accepts. Leshwi is overjoyed that the Spren have returned to the listeners. She asks after an honor Spren friend of hers and hums to one of the old rhythms. She and her forces join the fight. Navani sees what's happening in the atrium and Relaine is too far away. How awesome would it be in an alternate universe where Relaine bonded the sibling? Fanfic? The sibling tells her she is unworthy. Relaine takes command of the victorious humans, organizing triage and then escape to the Oath Gates. Kaladin gains his shard plate and reaches his father. Navani hums to and then inverts Odium's tone, pushing the void light slightly away from the sibling and stopping Moash in his tracks. She tells them that honor lives in the hearts of his children and hums his tone while the sibling sings to cultivation, snapping into the harmony of Tower Light, the song of science itself. The sibling accepts Navani's oath. Journey before destination, you bastard. Kaladin catches Liren, who is sporting a Shosh symbol on his forehead. He apologizes. But they don't match for too long, as Kaladin's brands finally fall away. Dalinar finally meets with Ishar, who accuses him of being Odium's champion and attacks with Zeth's father's honor blade. As they flee, Relaine asks Venli if there are other Reachers that would bond a listener, but apparently he's already spoken for. Meet Toomey, who shows him a stained glass vision of Kaladin. Ishar goes nuts with connection, trying to take Dalinar's bond to the Stormfather. Zeth jumps in and severs that with Nightblood, collapsing the perpendicularity Dalinar tried to open. Ishar claims that the Shin have made gods of the Unmade, and that Zeth's father gave him the Honor Blade, thanking him for death. Zeth attacks, and Nightblood chips the Honor Blade. Ishar creates a perpendicularity to escape, and in that moment, Navani bonds the sibling, granting him a little clarity. He invites Dalinar to Shinovar to reset the Oath Pact. Navani helps the sibling expel the Void Light in their system, then directs Kaladin to the breakaway market. Aiden is ready to defend his people, and gets to wear Windrunner shard plate several books early. He's totally going to be bonded to his friend in the second arc. It then forms on Dabid, and then Leshwi, and back to Kaladin as the tower fully awakens, Regal's infused going unconscious. Dalinar goes into Ishar's tent to see the bodies of Spren pulled into the physical realm. We'll see where this goes in the next book, maybe. Moash runs away, feeling things. But from now on, never seeing things. Odium pulls Dalinar into a vision. He's afraid. But he can't agree to the terms Sephandrius wrote, as the Everstorm has functionally freed the singers and fused. He planned to use Roshar as a training ground for soldiers conquering the rest of the Cosmere. They rehash a new contract, Contest of Champions in 10 days. If Dalinar wins, Odium gives up Alethkar and Herdaz and stays bound to Roshar, though still able to send agents into the wider Cosmere. If Odium wins, he still stays bound, but gets to keep all nations he's conquered, and Dalinar becomes a fused. Navani has a final interaction with Raboniel. They sing together the rhythm of war, as Navani burns away the last remnants of her soul. Taravangian is primed, his dumbest, most emotional day. Renarin has delivered two corrupted spren. Zeth breaks in, demanding answers as to how Taravangian knew of his father's death. He shatters the gemstones, drawing Odium's attention, then draws a knife and kills Taravangian on his own time. At that moment, Taravangian gets drawn into a vision with Odium, where Nightblood conveniently also manifests. Bye bye race! Hello, Todium. Relaine, Leshwi, and Venli's group transfer to the Shattered Plains with Kaladin. They will find a third option, outside this war. Relaine will stay with the humans to watch and be certain, because again, genocide is bad. Taravangian is adjusting to godhood and its two sides, knowledge and fury. The body Zeth would have seen is race, consumed by Nightblood. Teft's funeral attended by all of Bridge Four except Rock. Syl is more alive now, and part of that stinks, but she's grateful for it. Taravangian sees how he can beat Dalinar, options that race missed. He's going to save them all. <sighs> 
Shallan uses the Sion, Ale, to contact Mraes and ending her association with the Ghostbloods. He tries to get her to reconsider, but she says she'll get to Ba Adomishram before they do, also delivering a message to Thydekar from Wit. Deal with your own stupid planet, you idiot! They are now at war. Venli finds the remaining listeners, including her mother. She sings the Song of Mornings, the first song her mother taught her, coaxing a light spren into her mother's gem heart. A chasm fiend appears, protectively looking at her, and her mother calls her by name. Cultivation now accepts her ideal. Kaladin asks Dalinar for permission to continue inventing therapy. Dalinar tells him of the impending contest, and asks him to travel to Shinovar to fix Ishar. He gives him Wit's flute, which Lyft had found. Lesian wakes up back on Roshar after a single day on Braze. El, the fused with no title, who has replaced parts of his carapace with metal, tells him, our new god made an exception to bringing him back early, because El wanted to see if anti-void light really works. Bye bye defeated one. Kaladin finds the merchant stall where Lyft found his flute, and reclaims Rock's razor, Sigzil's brush pens, and somehow Tien's wooden horse, then heads off to therapy. Dalinar and Navani talk about the upcoming contest. He's not going to pick Kaladin. The Stormfather says he was wise to show mercy, and claims to have done so himself on occasion. Eshenai, after falling into the chasm during the Battle of Narek, fights to stay alive in the Flood. She thinks a modified first ideal, hears her shard blade scream, then a tunes the rhythm of war, and holds on until the water recedes, then dies. But she just swore an ideal, so would linger in the cognitive realm for a bit. The Stormfather greets her, acknowledging he could have done more, and gives her one final gift. You wanted to know what was beyond the next hill. See them all. Farewell, Ashenai. Farewell, Radiant. And now, the epilogue. Wit's back at the war camps in Elokar's old palace, performing magic tricks for enlightened Windspran. Odium arrives, and it goes exactly how he expected. Apart from the middle bit. And that's Rhythm of War. Now you're ready for Wind and Truth! If you've been reading the preview chapters, we're almost to the end of Day 2. Check out my reaction videos to those releases here. Take advantage of Dragon Woodshop's Dragon Discount Days here, and get ready to read and find out.